Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 3 versus 3 on Tufflesmore and I'm going to be playing with the 7th Panzer Division. So I wanted to take another look at this map, this time around with an armoured division. Yeah, this is the latest map that's been added and I'll just zoom out once again so you guys can get a good look. We've got this wetland on the left hand side, this sort of closer range urban on the left and then we've got some high rises that are more spread out on the right and today I'm going to be playing on this right hand side starting off with T72 M1 which is going to be the best tank that we have at our disposal here with the 7th 17 front armor 19 penetration with an autoloader then we got a T72 MK which is going to be 15 front armor 19 penetration again with an autoloader uh, but bear in mind, these only have 2,100 meter range. So we are going to be outscaled uh, the closer we get to our opponent today, which is going to be Trey and his third US Armoured. You can see I've also brought up a couple of cubs, already using an MTLB with them to make sure that they are stocked up on missiles always. I've got some, I've got an Inkler squad back here. We've got a couple of these Conkers. We've got a couple of Spezia's Alphatada further up, Mochitz and BTR. Grenade launcher and then Mont Avkada out on the right hand side. A couple more Iglers on the way. Because I'm up against the third US, got to be really, really careful of the helicopters. He is going to have access to Apaches, Cobras, and those things can really, really hurt in the right situation. And since there is quite a lot of things that break line of sight, those Apaches can actually be pretty safe to use because if you keep them at low altitude, you can kind of peek them in and out either side of these buildings so making sure that I have plenty of man pads to shut that down is going to be super important. And we can see that our opponents here have invested into three pretty big, actually four pretty big artillery pieces. We're going to be starting to slam away at our teammate on the left hand side. So I'm thinking, you know what, we haven't been aggressed too much on this right hand side so I'm going to try and sneak up. We get the Murchison into these high rises, potentially get my recon into these high rises as well. And that could give us really good line of sight over all of the units that our opponent has here. Then we can get the T-72s close and try and get the job done that way. A little bit of counter battery coming out of Jaboid here with his grad at the back there. Trying to hit those artillery pieces early on, take them out of commission. T-72 here, slowly moving up, past the big buildings, looking for a shot there towards the M113. Hutchinson are going to get spotted briefly, but be really careful which building I go in because if I pick the wrong one, basically what can happen is they get all of their fire support on target. So you can see I put the Specials Alphabada here on return fire. So they don't get hit by the CEV, the Bradley, the PVADs. All of those units would be able to hit these uh, recon troops because they are in a high-rise building. Unfortunately, my grenade launch is going to get caught out in the open, but so far so good on the trades. We're now going to be engaging the engineer team with the Dragon. These only have the standard Dragon not the Dragon 2, so the penetration of these is only 14, which means they're only ever really going to do front, uh, one damage to the frontal armor of the T-72. Not too worried about that, you can see I have brought up some reinforcements already, a couple of uh, these Flamp Hunter T-055s, we have another uh, T-72 at the front there, they're going to be joining us there shortly. Currently I'm just trying to micro against the front line, make sure the my T-72 M1 doesn't get caught out just like that as the M1A1 HA turns the corner and absolutely pops it. Thankfully we do manage to shoot down a Jaguar in reply with those cubs. Now the Conkers firing away using the high rise there to get a good shot on target. Now another Conkers on the left hand side finding the side shot onto the M1A1HA. Massive kill. So the biggest problem I'm going to have throughout this game is those M1A1HAs. They've got decent penetration, well the best penetration at long range 2200 
and 75 meters range and they've got really thick armor so my T72 M1s really struggle to outmatch them but now I've got another couple of T72 M1s arriving we're gonna move forwards with the rest of the tanks now the M1A1 HA is dead as well we're more than happy to move up so Cobra gonna be trying to get a shot towards the T72 MK I imagine we're able to catch that and shoot it down another really really good trade so the plan is to sneak these T-72s around the left-hand side here, start putting holes in the PVADs in the M728 CUV, basically all of the support weapons here whilst avoiding this TOW-2, which would be relatively difficult for me to kill before it at least manages to hit one missile. So yeah, that's why I'm shifting to the left here. We're going to be engaging these engineers, again, which have the worst dragon, the guns plus the NSVT doing a lot of damage. I brought in a second Motafla for the far right as well just to make sure that we aren't being flanked around here. But now we got some fun arriving. Just four RM70s and they're going to be absolutely smashing this area. M728 CEV getting knocked out. Some of the infantry behind that building getting hit as well. So two under fire for just a moment. Now being shot from the front there by the dragon team. So got to be really careful. I don't want my T-72 to move forwards. Get side shot by the tow two. Also there was an Abrams there. Or not an Abrams, a Bradley. That I did manage to hit. That's good, just going to try and finish it off. Boom, down it goes. Another really nice kill. And the artillery there coming in, you're going to see plenty more of that. Because I've got all four of my big old RM70s on the field. And they're going to be supporting this tank push. that I'm going to continue to try and make into our opponents. The biggest difficulty here really is just his tanks are much ours quite significantly and that range you can see does allow him to find a side shot under the T-72M1. As long as my tanks are damaged I can't really approach his M1A1 Abrams and now Fury, one of his teammates, is going to be bringing up the beautiful Challenger Mark III. Now, this thing is an absolute beast because it has 20 front armor but it also has explosive reactive armor. So it technically has 22, 22, 12, <laughs> actually about 22 HP, but no, 12 HP. <laughs> I'm also going to be bringing in an artillery piece, just one Ekatsaya, so that I can focus down these tow support weapons. And that's pretty much all I brought it in for, just to make sure that I can kill those tow twos because they are in quite limited supply for the third US. Unless he chose to bring two cards, it's not really going to... Uh, not going to take me long to kill them all. The anyway, artillery is firing away once again. So loud. Absolutely slamming the PVADs. Doing plenty of damage to the M1A1 Abrams CP there. And that's exactly what we needed them to do. So two and two I fired. And <laughs> we demolished all of these buildings here. Very, very quickly indeed. This Abrams, it was still pretty healthy. So I'm kind of hoping that I can maybe get a couple shots on target from the T-72 M1. He is going to immediately smoke himself. Doesn't want to take that engagement. So now we're going to be bringing in plenty of H gems. I've got another T-72M1 on the way. I'm going to be continuing to really double down on my tanks because the main way that I'm going to be able to get through these is just overwhelming them and uh, potentially finding side shots. But side shots is easier said than done. Um, but definitely getting really good trades and then just amassing a bunch of troops and pushing through them is probably the way that it's going to be easiest for me to do that whilst also using the RM-70s 
uh, which are going to be draining my fob here on the left hand side. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. The high rises in the distance, the RM70s pressing the rough ground here to get into position once again. They're going to be nicely lined up and ready to go. I could say it. Trying to have a go at the M1A1 Abrams CP. If he doesn't move it, there's a good chance we might actually get the kill. Just needs a couple shots on target and that'll be job done. So there's one doing the damage and the second almost getting the kill. Third one coming in. He doesn't move. Abrams goes down. So a big kill for the Akatsaya. Managing to just about unload the HGMs in time here as well, which is going to allow me to engage the M901 ITV here, the Bradley, and also the Abrams at range. These HGMs, they all have 2400 meter range. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the M1A1 has 2275 meter range. So if I can put them in the right place, they can stay out of range of the M1 Abrams and still fire on them. In this case, just trying to get it into the high rise so that we can start to shoot at softer targets like the Chaparral and the M901 because shooting the Abrams in the front armor actually isn't that efficient. Uh, it does do damage obviously over time, but because we've only got 16 penetration and he's got 17 front armor, we're only going to be doing one damage a hit. But the RM70 is aiming once again. And there we go. It's firing away. So this time smashing the chaparral. I was really hoping to clip these tanks as well. And I managed to do just that. Taking a couple of damage off the Challenger Mark III. The M728CV also being taken down to less than half health. Especially as Afghanistan did get spotted. So they've now opened up on the fire team. You see I've continued to build up forces back here. Now going to be trying to move into position so that we can maybe overwhelm the Challenger Mark III if I can get close enough. Well, HGM further back is going to be able to find a shot onto the Bradley. Let's require a couple of these Fagos in order to get the Bradley kill. At least the T-72M1s are going to be able to kill off the Fireteam Dragon if he doesn't move that back. Now once again splitting my artillery. I've moved them forward slightly from their previous location. They're going to be aiming again. The cool thing about these RM-70s is they get 40 rockets. They fire salvos of 20. So you do get two salvos out of them without having to reload. So what I do is basically fire them, let them reload and then fire them again in a slightly different location. Then I go back to the fob, get some more ammo, move them away from the fob, do it all over again. You can see the Apache and Toe Cobra trying to get line of sight onto these T-72M1s. I do have the Iglers here, but this one on the right hand side doesn't have line of sight. You can see that he's keeping them very low behind this building and sneaking them to the side to get the Hellfire on target. Nice micro from Trey. He's going to almost land a couple shots on the T-72. Luckily for me, they're going to miss. I'm just going to lose track on the last one. Higler tries to move out on the side. Here come the rockets once again. It does look very, very cool. Mechanized rifles actually managed to mostly dodge that, which was quite impressive. Anyway, since these are going to be really, really annoying and my Iglers can get into line of sight, one of them got killed. I was floating a little bit of points and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to use some seed planes to take them out. So I've sent two to kill the Apache, one to kill the Toe Cobra. We managed to kill both of them and we're going to be making the Great Escape. So really fantastic value for me. Obviously investing 240 points per plane um, kind of sets me behind a little bit overall, but I'm obviously going to be able to use them again in future. So uh, 
hopefully be able to get some really good value. Anyway, with the mechanised rifles dead on the left hand side, Sniper's now vulnerable, that gets taken out thanks to the Specials Alpha spotting them. Engineers of Dragon also going to be able to be taken out on top of that building. Uh, Cubs on the back side here trying to help out against the tornado that's going to get wiped out on the left hand side there. Meanwhile, T72 and one's now going to hit the Challenger very hard. The best thing about this situation is this Challenger is on very low cohesion. So I'm hoping to overwhelm it. But these T72 and one struggling to get line of sight due to this small office building just there. Meaning I had to come to the left in order to shoot it. Going to smoke that one off just so he doesn't get the last shot on target. And then we're able to finish off with the fresh ones. Really, really nice. Now going for the Bradley M1A1 HA. You can see here with the 22 penetration. Really, really scary. Going to actually land a shot onto the TO55 on the right hand side, the standard M1A1. Doing a lot of damage to the T72 M1 here. Sniper on the left in a sneaky spot for the M1A1 HA and let it kill the T72 MK. That's a mistake right there. Big mistake. T72 M1 does manage to get a good hit onto the M1A1 HA. I'm going to have to smoke both of those as the Abrams here still superior especially in equal numbers, so really bad news. And it's managing to hit every shot with them so far. What I'm going to do, get the Special Zavgada to jump forward since the M1A1 Abrams here was getting close. We actually managed to get an RPG-18 on target onto the side armor. Fortunately, my T-72 M1 in the open here was taken out. This one gets shot as well. If I can potentially trade an M1A1 HA, that would be fantastic. But the third one here also now going to get taken out as those tanks absolutely do a number on me. This one cooking off as well. Sad times indeed. All of these ones are damaged. They're waiting for the T813s to arrive. I was hoping that I'd be able to retreat the ones that were damaged further forwards, but he didn't let me. He kept up the pressure and found those kills whilst keeping his own alive. So well played to him. I'm back to Kent Square 1 again, <laughs> and I'm very much reliant on my RM70s, on my Agatire, uh, to try and find these kills. Getting the uh, Agatire actually to engage the M1A1 HA uh, would have been a really, really good idea right now, but um, I was obviously focusing on getting stuff fixed up, getting another T72 MK in position. Keeping these alive is really, really important because that's going to be the primary way that I engage the enemy sector here. Now... HGM trying to have a go. You can see I have instead focused on this left hand side though. With all of my artillery. Currently Jiboid pushing up the mid with a ton of T80BVs. My RM70 is firing away. Here they come. Huge strike there. As we demolish multiple units supply included t80 bv is now going to be able to charge forwards and get a ton of damage done there however the rifles with the law 80 are still going to be a pain anyone on the right I'm trying to get this h gem on target if i can kill the m35 supply there that'd be nice stop them from repairing See, so I have brought up my own supply behind this building just to make sure that HGM has ammo. More T-72s arriving. Every time I was making one of these pushes, I was floating quite a bit whilst I was microing them. So afterwards, I was bringing like another wave of tanks. It's kind of a good thing to do, um, attacking in waves like this. Attacking piecemeal one by one would definitely cause me to lose very quickly. And I pushed up the good there. That's going to be trying to have a go at the A10. A line of T72Ms is forming though. I want to try and engage them before this M1A1 HA gets fixed. You see I've also preemptively bought a couple of these SU-22s with the AT missiles. The KH-29T. So that I can use those to engage these tanks as well at the same time. 
So Recon's now moving forwards. T72 M1 trying to get on target of the M3A1 Bradley. Does manage to find one shot looking for the second. Got to be careful though of a Toad 2 hitting us a second time. So I'm going to smoke that one off. It is going to be in range of the repairs regardless, so that's absolutely fine. On the right hand side, fire team needs to go down in case I want to get aggressive. Kubs absolutely <laughs> deleting the A10 on the left hand side there. But here we go again with the artillery smashing the left side, going to be smashing the right side as well. Nice kill from the HGM, finishes off the M1A1 HJ. These RMs are going to be able to engage the M1A1 there as well. Does get killed by the T72 beforehand. But at least we're going to hit the CEV a little bit and then the other infantry or transports that were in that position. And these mechanized rifles, they do have Dragon 2s with 18 penetration, so they're going to be a little bit more potent. Side shots will hurt a substantial amount more. We're able to get the better of them. Meanwhile, my Cub's going to come across, try and shoot down the Kiowa. Taking out that recon would be really, really nice for us. But here comes an A-10. Takes out my T-72M. Tornado GR-1 coming in for the bombing strike. Gets hit by the Cub. Not able to get his bombs off, which was good. Second shot there from the Cub, not getting the job done. A-10 Thunderbolt coming back around. Does find the TO-55. Good. missing once again. Thankfully the T813s were here so I was able to keep these loaded up and keep having a go every time these helicopters and the aircraft were trying to kill my tanks but so far really good. We've managed to trade nicely uh, with his M1A1s and just make sure that he has none left to stop me from getting a command into the sector which is the next step. We are going to find his fire team leader. They actually revealed themselves by firing the M16s. A little bit of a tip, of course. Make sure your leaders, particularly if they're small leader squads like this, are on return fire. HGM, meanwhile, coming in from the right-hand side. Very cheeky indeed. Also an M1A1 HA casually strolling over the field here. Uh, Got to be careful. Anyway, Seed coming in. You can see the Seed was going for the Lynx AH7s. Doesn't end up hitting the PVADs. I do lose one of the seed aircraft of, for that. This one trying to go for the M1A1 HA on the right hand side. Does manage to land a hit but gets shot down for it. If I can land another shot on target with the KH29T, that'd be another Abrams going down, which would be huge. Big hits from the Ace of Gems on those buildings on the side there. But meanwhile, we have been pushed out. Again, T72MK did not manage to make it into the sector there. Enemy tow 2 on the right hand side. Causing me problems, so I'm going to be targeting that with the Akatsaya. This SU-22 failing to hit its first KH-29T. Second one also missing. So, unfortunately, only one out of three shots so far landed on target. But let's check out this Bessia's Outcloud on the back here. Fires three RPG 18s, manages to hit all three vehicles there, and then allows the T 72 to find the side shot. Huge, absolutely huge. And the T 72 MK, whilst it is low on health, is going to be sneaking into that sector. And on the left hand side, our team's managed to get in here, so great job there. Just hoping to kill the Toad 2. Managed to do so. PBADS goes down. Massive kills right now. Massive kills indeed. So M1A1HA does get fixed up on the right hand side. Big build up of forces on the back side. He's a perfect target for my RM70s. So they're going to be ready to fire once again. And we're going to be darkening the skies with those awesome rockets. So T72MK here. Saved by the Spezia's Aufklader's RPG-18. I tell you what, these special forces really did save the bacon. 
of this T-72. I still had smoke left on it, so able to smoke it off. Forces his Thunderbolt to attack the Spessos Alpha instead. He does manage to get a kill onto the T-72. He's also going to get another T-72 out in the open as I try and engage the M1A1. So that A-10 certainly did work, but at least we managed to kill it off. We also managed to kill the fire team leader on the left-hand side. Might have noticed those rockets coming in, doing a lot of damage to his units there. So still trading, but obviously always getting kind of caught out of range, potentially. Well, SC-22 gets payback onto the M1A1HA, so that's really, really good for us. Conkers looking for the shot onto the M1A1, unfortunately unsuccessful. Tornado GR1 testing my AA once again. Not getting away with it as he flies over the left-hand side. The counter battery is coming in onto these rockets. You can tell they're feeling the pain. That's not going to hit anytime soon because every time I fire, we're moving immediately afterwards. Big mistake actually for me there. With the T72M, it was facing the wrong direction. I smoke in the wrong direction. And then it gets killed. <laughs> also, this T72MK ended up getting killed off as well. I was hoping to hit with this one and then have the leader come out and shoot it as well, I think. But alas, both are down. We still control the sector because we killed his leader earlier, so that's good. But we are certainly limited on the number of tanks we have left. So had to bring in another batch, another wave, ready to go. And we'll probably try and time that with a rocket strike or something so that I can continue to make ground once again. But every time it's all about primarily dealing with the M1A1 Abrams first and foremost, everything else can easily be cleaned up by the T-72s themselves. So another fire team leader coming in on the left hand side. Whilst you do get decent availability of these like low health squads or low strength squads, using them is somewhat like a bad idea because you can get much better leader squads that are much more resilient and generally that's what I would recommend particularly in contested sectors the RMs are firing away once again the ones on the left firing at the fire team leader these ones trying to chip the rifles in the high rise building we're going to do a lot of damage to this Bradley if you take out the FV432 this fire team leader actually really really lucky to not take any damage at all from that rocket strike artillery is coming in on my cubs dangerously close to my pioneer fjorda see i'm bringing in a couple of pioneer fjorda here so that we can continue to contest this sector on the right hand side t72s are going to try and make a little bit of a play here we're up against multiple chieftain mark 11s and this bradley ifv they all gotta go. Fortunately, one of my pioneers gets sniped by the M1A1 Abrams here. He managed to at least push off the A10. That was good. A10 also getting shot down. Now this T72M1 getting quite a lot of damage towards these units further back. My Akatsaya, meanwhile, hits the leader. Unfortunately, T-72M1 going to get picked off by the Chieftain Mark 11. We're going to continue the engagement with those at long range, though. The difficulty we have against the Mark 11 is it does have 20 penetration at 2,275 meter range. And we only have 19 penetration at 2,100 meter range. So again, they get an extra couple penetration scaling. Because they are like a couple hundred meters closer to us. And therefore, they're dealing way more damage than we are in these long-range engagements. So we're going to have to pull back, get these fixed up. Do have supply ready to go for that purpose. And all the while, the Pioneer Führer is going to remain hidden and contesting that right sector. Conkers having a go. Trying to hit the M113, I believe. Especially as I've got a Getting some shots into the M1A ones always very nice. Because the weaker they are, 
the more chance there is that I'm going to be able to kill them with artillery, the rocket strikes, I could say, I kind of thing, without having to directly engage them with the T-72s, which is always a problem. You see, every time I'm directly engaging his tanks with the T-72s, I'm losing, unless the opponents are already damaged or have low cohesion. And so that's the key, and that's why the artillery is so important. Like, these rockets have been keeping me in the game big time. Shame my Conkers missed its side shot onto the M1A1 earlier, because that would have been really, really helpful. Watchardson landing a nice RPG onto the Chieftain Mark 11s here. You see what I filled my air tab? We're going to come in with a nice big SU-22 strike. So, AT planes, they can target any of the heavier armor, like the M1A1s. Uh, the clusters can do the same. We'll have the bombers then hit any light targets or maybe target um, some weakened units. But here we go. The cluster now coming in, looking for the Chieftain Mark 11s here. Going to do some damage to them. AT planes not quite hitting the mark, unfortunately. But here come the bombers. Unfortunately, unable to kill the SU-22 M4. Uh, oh, sorry, kill the uh, AH-64 with the first pass. So, second pass coming in from another seed aircraft. Do end up losing one of my cluster SU-22s and one of the MiGs. This SU-22 coming back around since the Chaparral's reloaded and I've got time to strafe it, so... Was trying to do that. And there is a PVADS, so... Can't continue that engagement. Tornado GR1 coming in, finding a couple of Kub kills. Does, however, go down. So good that we killed the seed there, because we're no longer gonna, gonna have to really worry about many more of those planes. But my airstrikes, in the end, actually rather lackluster. Didn't do too much damage. It caused our opponents to have to fall back for sure, but uh, didn't really. Uh, get as much done as I wanted, didn't kill as many chieftains as I wanted, didn't kill the M1A1 Abrams because my SU-22 AT planes didn't really have line of sight properly and uh, therefore didn't hit the mark. Lovely side shot by the M1A1 there. Kills my T-72 outright. Check out all these conkers I'm now brought up though. And these chieftain Mark 11s, they're pretty vulnerable to conkers because they have 15 front armor. The Conkers, with its 20 penetration, able to basically two-shot a Chieftain Mark 11. M2A2 Bradley trying to get the Sage Chums on target. T-72 is kind of letting me down, to be honest. Unable to get the shot on target. And there we go. You can see it does like three damage, so I guess it would technically take four Conkers in the front armor to get the kill. But a side shot will just absolutely annihilate them. Speaking of being annihilated, my poor T-72 is down here. We're getting toasted as we try and continue to move forwards. Try keeping this at nicely at range. Really, really tempting to use my Pioneer Fielder here with the 18 pen to try for a side shot onto the M1A1. But the main thing really that I need to do is just keep that in there, keep contesting. Keep the control points going up. Keep playing the objective. Don't kind of try and go for KD. If this was a destruction game, that'd be a different story. But in this case, it doesn't matter too much. And I'm going to opt for another airstrike that will hopefully do the same job. So, MiG-21 coming in for the bombing strike onto the Chaparral. I'm going to bomb that out. Cluster kills the M1A1. Easy peasy. Unfortunately, we got hit by a Chaparral further back and then the PVADs finish us off there. A nice couple of strikes. SU-22 now going to come over. Look for the PVADS kills. Unfortunately, not going to find one with the first shot. Looking for the second. And second one finds the kill. So, managed to take out a PVADS. Managed to kill the Chaparral. Killed the M1A1. Lost one of my planes. Uh, one of my MiGs for that. But, uh, alas... Not too bad. Not too bad. Now I've got the support of the MI-24Ds that are hoping to help with their rockets, get the rockets on target of enemy infantry, clean them out of these buildings, 
so that the T-72Ms can then focus on the enemy tanks. Now, utilizing these high-rises with the HGMs has also been super important. They can really just like chip these heavy tanks over time and really punish any micro mistakes. Yeah, you can see I'm kind of backing up on the left hand side here getting them into a nice line ready to go. My RM70 is now out of order. Why you might ask? Well both the fobs got completely drained in this game by rocket artillery. I actually ended up using Jiboid's fob for one uh, reload as well so <laughs> yeah we got through a lot of supply using those but they have been extremely effective so I wasn't too concerned. And we are getting close to the end of the game now. Three minutes, 45 seconds left on the game in total. One minute until victory with a plus four. A10s on the left side there are actually getting quite a lot of damage done, but it's not going to help them hold the ground. E72Ms waiting to make the push again. Weasel coming in. Looking for the kill onto the MI2 and the MI24D. Actually fails to get the shot on target. Going to be forced to fly over loads of AA. Therefore gets killed off. Thunderbolt also going down. Pioneer if you're not spotted yet on this right hand side. I imagine, I, I don't know where he thought that might have been. Maybe like tucked in one of these buildings hiding or something further back. Because it kind of looks like it's on the left hand side. By the way that the front line is. But I think that's just because his leader was probably here. And mine's slightly more to the left so it skews it slightly. Regardless. 40 seconds left. So T-72s, they're going to be pushing in. Firing at that Abrams between the building there. We are going to be able to take it out big boom. Artillery is going to come and start hitting the Challenger Mark III as we approach that. Eagle trying to hold back the Apache. 18 seconds until victory. Just got to keep up the pressure. So the T-72s are going to continue to move forwards, continue to take damage. They're going to smoke off to keep them safe. In the last moments and that's going to be victory. What a game on that right hand side. Utilizing my T-72s to really just kind of brute force on that right hand side. Nice East German heavy armor covered by awesome MLRS strikes. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Really really fun game and it was interesting to try the terrain on that side of the map. This Akataya it could have probably been firing a little bit more often. Uh, there was a couple of times where I kind of forgot about it, where it could have maybe killed like an M1A1HA. But otherwise, killing the three Toe Twos that he had in his deck, really important. Uh, catching up the M1A1 Abrams CP, really good. Killing the fire team leader because we spotted it, really good. So all of those kills, super important from the Akataya. Uh, meanwhile, the RM17s, they didn't actually get that many kills themselves. Like, there were some good kills like the fire team leader again. Um, but most of it's just sort of light targets and the the real value just came from the chip damage that they dealt uh, throughout. So yeah, fantastic stuff. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed this game. I thought it was really, really fun. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.